This is your Bolo Punch Boxing Hour, brought to you by George Rogie Insurance, www.bolopunchboxinghour.com. Streaming to you live, as always, on Ustream.tv. Mo, we've got a lot of ground to cover with all the fights that there were. Let's start with last Friday night. Glenn Coff Johnson wins an absolute uh, smackdown over uh, over Judah, Daniel Judah, older brother to, uh, to Zab Judah. Um, former light heavyweight champion Glenn Johnson wins a convincing unanimous decision over Daniel Judah on Friday night, possibly putting himself in line for another title shot. That's right off of ESPN.com. Yeah, I mean, these guys have fought before. They, it was a, actually a draw the last time they fought. Yeah. and uh, A hotly contested draw. Yeah, and this time uh, there was no contest about it. John, uh, Johnson did what he was supposed to and took Absolutely. care of him. And uh, I, he's getting up there in age. That's the only thing with Johnson. I it's mean, it's not the only thing with Johnson. It's definitely one of the big things <laughs> with Johnson. The other thing is that no one wants to fight him. No one cares how old he is. They're not. They're not factoring in his age. They're factoring in the fact that you're not going to beat him probably. And if you do, you're not going to look good. You're going to look like garbage doing it. And no it, one's going to look at your at your fight against Glenn Johnson and say, "Oh, I want to fight that guy." No. I mean, he beat Roy Jones, matter. and he didn't get the same accolades that Tarver did because he was not the first guy to do it. You know, Tarver's made a lot of money off of that win. Johnson has had a lot of trouble trying to produce money out of the win that he got because it was it was not as highly publicized, you know, as what happened no. with, with Tarver. Because and it wasn't two rounds. <laughs> there was no trash talk before. You got any excuses tonight, Roy? I mean, there was no, you know, you know garbage talk from uh, Tarver. Um, Johnson came in, did did his job, and left. I mean, yeah, he says that he thinks he's uh, he thinks he's the number two tar- uh, uh, light heavy. He thinks that Hopkins is number one, and uh, he thinks that he wants to fight. Yeah, he wants to fight Hopkins. He wants Why to not? fight. He wants to fight Chad Dawson again because he believes he beat Dawson, but Dawson doesn't wants nothing to do with him. I think Chad Dawson beat him, and I think Chad Dawson would be a fool to, to fight, fight him, him again. again. Yeah, because he didn't look that great in the fight. Because Glenn he, does better. We need gets a chance to fight for people the second one. Yeah, most, I mean, yeah, most, of the time. most uh, talented fighters do that. Do that. They they learn holes, and uh, I mean, obviously, uh, Dawson knew a lot of holes in in Johnson enough holes to win the fight the first time. Yeah, and uh, I don't think he's going to gain much by beating him again. All he has a chance to do is oh. lose something if he Chad loses. Yeah, Dawson, if you're listening, if you're smart at all, which we know you are, we hung out with you in the. In Canastota last year. But There's this is absolutely a, no reason. This is exactly the type of guy mm-hmm. that Hopkins brought up on ESPN that he would like to fight. I mean, he didn't bring up this name, but he he brought up guys that are getting older. Uh, older, you know, he doesn't want to fight the young guys because he's afraid he's going to damage the reputation of the sport. So I mean, uh, he's wants to fight a guy that's getting close to their retirement. And yeah. uh, I mean, there ain't very many guys that are much closer than Johnson is. No, he he spelled out the recipe for. Uh, you must be talking about Hopkins. Yeah. There's very there's no one else that he could have been talking about. So, uh, Glenn Johnson, my hat's off to you. Not that I was wearing one. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, we pretty much talked about uh, uh, Adam Eck. We'll be talking about that a little bit more a little later. But, um, yeah, Jonathan Banks, like I said earlier, did, did, a, did a wonderful job of, uh, of, you know, establishing the jab and getting the boxing part of his game down <laughs> the first three rounds. I was impressed with the, the first thing, three rounds from The him. thing was is he – he seemed to get a little bit relaxed. Adamek kind of brought him into that brawl. You know, that's what Adamek does. He gets you going, and you think that, oh, I could take his shots, and then all of a sudden he hits harder than what you think he was He hitting. takes bigger punchers and spins them around to where they don't know what's going on, and then the little cartoon with the little birds and the stars spinning <laughs> around. You're like, I thought this guy was just a boxer. I didn't. He did the same thing to Hurricane uh, Paul Briggs in Chicago twice. But I, twice I sat ringside and watched that. As Banks boxed when he yes. was uh, when he was boxing throughout that fight, if he would have stu- instead of brawling like he ended up doing at the end of the fight, if he would have boxed, he probably would have lasted the the distance and had a good chance of winning. It is possible. It was very close. The fight was very close. Either anyways, uh, I can't remember what they said the scores were because I believe they read the scores, even though it was a decision. It was a knockout. Yeah, I thought they read. I was going to say that last round wasn't close, <laughs> but. Uh, once Leading once, up to that flurry that caused the stoppage, it was close. Yeah, and uh, I don't know. Banks did pretty good. I think he's still still uh, held in pretty high regard in, in the cruiserweight division. But uh, I don't know what Adam X going to do. He's saying he's going to heavyweight. We'll have to see. I'd love to see it. Do I mean? Do you really want to see him fight Galata? 
I want to see him do what he can do. I mean, uh, he David. He be. thinks David Hay went up. He thinks he can do it. David Hay is a little bit bigger guy than what he is. I think this would be cool. If this is how we re-energize the heavyweight division and say, you know what, these giant 300-pound freaks, and I'm not calling Nikolai Valuev a freak, but when you're talking about, you know, the basis of the sport was, I mean, 30 years ago, the, a 225-pound heavyweight was What was crazy. the guy's name? What was the guy's name that fought Joe Lewis and was winning all those uh... – well, all those rounds, he was winning the fight, and then uh, Billy and then, Khan. Billy Khan, that's Billy who Khan it was. was like, like 175 pounds when he fought. <laughs> and he moved up in weight and did had a great fight with the heavyweight champ, and, uh, and I damn near became the heavyweight champion. Not that, that Lewis is quite as big as Klitschko, but <laughs> no, but you have you have very little to base it on outside of Joe Lewis. I mean, he he was the he, biggest guy around, at the and time. he was the biggest puncher. Yeah, I mean, he, he oh. his punching power would compare all to night. Somebody. all night. A man could br- punch through a brick wall without a problem. But that's uh, that's what you. I mean, if Billy Khan can do it, possibly Adamek. I mean, it's <laughs> it's interesting. It's interesting. It, you, you it, can... it, very least, it is interesting. Bob Foster did something very similar with. Yeah. Uh, no, no, they're gonna. He got knocked the, out. The, pure, the purists <laughs> are gonna sit. Well, Billy Khan got knocked out by Joe yeah. Lewis. Yeah. Um, and we're we're not talking about Joe Lewis. We're talking about forty years later with Joe Frazier. But um. But that was the what third round that he got knocked out in. Well, yeah, it was a lot. Second, it was a lot. Second, quicker. I can't remember. But he absolutely rocked um, Joe Frazier with that uh, with that crazy left hook of his. Uh, Bob Foster's left hook is not to be, you know, toyed with. And Frazier, even to this day, when that when you ask him who hit you with the hardest left hook, he he says, "I got to go with Foreman." However, little little what are those? Yeah. Little, he, he didn't. He didn't say the word asterisk, but he said the little star thing. <laughs> you definitely want to put in Bob Foster. Yeah. So I wasn't conducting that interview, but I was about five feet away from it. And Mark has uh, caught somebody with a nice hook this weekend as well. Mark has did his job too, and we're talking <laughs> about Juan Manuel uh, Marquez. Um, Whoop some tail in probably what, what – well, definitely what's considered – fight of the year material yeah it's way too early in the year but then again at this point it's so far this year it probably would be considered sure. a fight but vasquez marquez was what january of yeah last no year? it was march last year was it march of last year yeah that's crazy that's crazy <laughs> but um, because all year you're just, you, you already have the benchmark for it and uh, <laughs> april comes a cool fight like no nah, it's not better than that one. <laughs> and, then, and then all summer then you like, got to go back and watch it again to make sure it's oh, not better thank god for youtube man. <laughs> I don't have to put in a, a, a DVD anymore. I don't need to even. But say Diaz that. Diaz started out doing what he was supposed to, boxing him, and uh, the cut I think was the big factor in this fight. Diaz was fighting great again until he got that cut. I, I'm thinking well, Marquez he, was already cut. Marquez was bleeding already, and he's like, "Bring it." But where the cuts were were two were big difference. Marquez was kind of on the outside of his eye, bleeding and not going in his eye. Now Diaz's cut was above his eye. And it was running into his eye, and he said it was affecting his vision. It was probably the same cut sustained in the Nate Campbell fight. Yeah, I don't know if it's the exact same cut, but it's similar, very similar. Definitely similar. And, and if it's going into your vision, it's going to... And they weren't doing the greatest vision. job stopping it. I mean, uh, he, maybe he needs to find a different cut, man. Maybe the guy out of Laporte over here could help him a little bit. Uh, <laughs> oh, Malcolm Garrett. Malcolm Garrett. I mean, he's a great cut, man. Speaking of Sourland, because <laughs> he works for Sourland, uh, no, we said at the, at the top of the, the previous... Uh, section of, of tonight's show was uh was that sourland out of germany inked um uh layman brewster former wbo heavyweight champion of the world so uh i don't know i don't know what happened with brewster had had his own uh, relentless promotions and he was going to be fighting exclusively under that that banner. maybe he decided it's a little bit hard for him to do both uh, promote himself and uh fight at the same time and train correctly so it was a really great event though that event in, in cincinnati that I was at a few months ago. It, it was i mean uh, they didn't understand a couple of key points like getting a place for press um you know letting us sit down <laughs> things, things of that nature but the, but the event itself was awesome so yeah but, juan manuel marquez he did not start you, you nailed it. Yeah, he, with your pick last week, you absolutely. Yeah, I said nailed Diaz. It. Usually, what he does is he wears the guys out, yeah. and uh, they'll start hot, and then wear the guys out, and then he can continue through that. But Marquez's thing is not to start real hot yeah. and finish up strong. And uh, I mean, you seen him with Pacquiao. They actually talked quite a bit about it during the fight. Uh, sure. But and then that's what he did. He he weathered the storm early and uh, turned it on late, and ended up catching Diaz and knocking him out. Mm. Well, we'll be talking a little bit more about this uh, in the upcoming segment. Let's go ahead and take a second break of the night. We'll be right back at you. This is your Bolo Punch Boxing Hour brought to you by George Rogie Insurance. Hey, guys, it's 